How's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about combustion analysis and why you should be testing every gas-fired appliance on a startup or on every maintenance. Let's do some work. All right, so what is combustion analysis? In a nutshell, it's basically the way we need to test and check the air-fuel ratio when it comes to a gas-fired appliance. We need to be checking the stack temperature, the CO levels in the stack as well just to make sure overall the system is running and operating the way it was designed. So the second question is gonna be, why would we wanna perform a combustion analysis? Well, there's a few reasons. The first reason could be efficiency. We wanna make sure that machine is running tip top shape the way it was designed. We also wanna check for safety reasons. We wanna make sure the equipment is not putting out a high CO level into the environment. And also we wanna be checking combustion stability. We wanna make sure everything is running smoothly like it was designed. And then lastly, we wanna be looking at maintaining manufacturer's guidelines on how that machine was designed in the factory. And we wanna to try to get it to operate the same way or close to the same way out in the field. And the third question we wanna ask is, when do we need to perform a combustion analysis? Well, that's pretty simple. We wanna do it every time we do a preventive maintenance. So typically that's gonna be annually. And then also when we're gonna be starting up a new system. So when we're installing that piece of equipment and we're going through a proper startup, we wanna be doing a combustion analysis and taking notes of that from the very beginning. And the fourth question that we wanna ask ourselves is how do we perform a combustion analysis? And that's where Fieldpiece comes in. They just announced their latest combustion analyzer. It's their CAT85K2. Now this particular kit comes with a wireless printer as well. So if you need to print off something tangible to give to your customer when you're done testing, you can do that with this kit. So let's dive in and see what all comes in this kit. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice is gonna be the actual combustion probe. Um, and just like most probes, it has this cone fitting here to where once you drill the hole into the vent ducting, you can uh, basically screw that in there, friction fit it, and then this probe will slide right into there. And depending on how you need to adjust it, you can lock it down with this set screw right there, and it'll hold it in place for you. Because the main thing is um, probe placement. You wanna make sure you're getting it in the right uh, orientation and the right depth when it comes to putting it into the actual ducting. So anyhow, you've got your probe, and of course you've got the main device itself. Now the first thing that I recognized when I got this uh, device is that the durability, just like all field piece products, it's super durable. It's got this rubber um, housing on the outside just from you know hitting it and banging it, maybe dropping it, it's gonna protect it. Um, and then also it has a really nice display on this model. I really like that. Um, it has built-in magnets on the back side. It has four of them. So obviously when you're working on the equipment, it's gonna be metal. So you can go ahead and attach it to the um, uh, equipment and it's gonna hold it in place for you while you're doing all your testing. And um, it's just really nice to have that feature built in. One cool thing about this analyzer that Fieldpiece came out with is what they call their sensor vault. What that means is whenever you power it on and then when you power it off, you have to fully depress the power button and you're actually gonna feel it click. What's happening is it's opening or sealing or unsealing the O2 and the CO sensors. So what that does is it seals it off to any um, ambient oxygen to where the sensor can last a lot longer. Now they're saying these sensors last about four years before you have to replace them. And also when it comes to the sensors, when they come from the factory, when you replace them, they're already calibrated. So you don't have to worry about calibrating them for the whole shelf life. So you just use them for the four years and when the time is up, you replace them and you're good to go. All right, so going back to the probe, the field piece has come out with a new design for this particular model and they call it the hydro cycle. So typically on an analyzer, you're gonna have condensation coming in here and there's gonna be a little water trap that you're gonna to have to clean out every once in a while, or after every use probably. Um, with this particular model, with that hydro cycle, what it does is it automatically pumps out any condensation, any water back into the venting, into the, um, the actual stack. So you don't have to worry about ever doing that. The only thing you really need to think about is when you're removing it, just elevate it a little bit like this, 
as you're pulling it out, just to make sure any condensation that's still left in there is gonna drip out and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about ever cleaning any traps. All right, so when it comes to actually testing your equipment, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is grab your probe and connect it to the actual analyzer itself. It just pushes and locks in just like that. Now, what you always wanna do is be in an ambient air um, environment to where you can zero out the probe. So let's say you are in a mechanical room and you've got tons of furnaces operating. Well, that might throw off your reading. So it would be a good idea is to go outside before you actually turn this on because it's gonna go through that auto calculator or that auto um, zeroing function. So that way, once you go back into the mechanical room and you put it into your ducting or to your venting, you're gonna have accurate readings. So make note of that. Make sure you um, get into some fresh air when you're actually turning this on for the first time. So once we actually do, once we're actually ready to go ahead and turn it on, remember you wanna fully click this button, you're gonna feel it, and then it's gonna take about 60 seconds to go through its function and fully warm up before it's ready to actually go into service and start testing. When the analyzer first boots up, it automatically goes to the combustion page. Now you can go into the job menu and choose a different mode if you want. You can go into um, ambient CO. So let's say you're having a customer that's complaining that possibly their CO levels are a little high in the living space. Well, you can use this device for that as well. You can go ahead and go into the ambient CO mode, start walking around the living space and start taking some measurements. And again, that's a really cool option to have within this tool. This actual analyzer does multiple things. And I'm gonna go into uh, a few of them here in a minute, but this is a very handy tool, this particular model, because it does offer quite a few options to where it kind of takes three to four different tools and puts them into one. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the combustion mode. And the first thing you're gonna see are the four parameters that they have on that screen. It's gonna be your dry bulb temperature of the stack, it's gonna be your O2 percentage, your CO PPM, and your CO air-free PPM. Now I wanna talk about where we wanna actually place the probe within your venting. Now obviously you wanna have it on the supply side, what's leaving, what's exiting your uh, appliance, and typically you wanna have it as close as you can to the appliance. Now once you drill the hole, which is about a 3 8 hole, into that ducting, you wanna place the probe halfway in between um, that actual pipe, or they say wherever the CO levels are the highest. But typically you wanna put it about midway within the pipe. So what I like to do is push it all the way in. Let's say it's on a four inch piece of pipe. So you push it all the way in, and then I'll back it out about two inches, and then I'll lock it down. That way I know it's right in the middle of that duct. So I'm gonna go ahead and power this thing down now. That way the probe is not running the entire time while I'm filming this video. But again, when we power the analyzer down, you wanna fully press it until it clicks. And then it's gonna go through its countdown just to basically remove any flue gases that are in the probe. And then also it's gonna show you sensor sealed. That that's telling you that both of your sensors are now sealed off and you're, you're good to go. You can go ahead and just wait the 60 seconds and once it's done. Also, when you're doing the, sh uh, the shutdown process, make sure the probe is out of the actual ducting. You don't want it, you want it back in the ambient air, the fresh air, so while it's going through its, um, its turning off process. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll set that down for now. But when you are testing your equipment, it's good to let it run for at least five minutes, five to 10 minutes, and that way you can go through and you can really test out all of the parameters, make some adjustments if you need to, whatever the case is, but you wanna have that run time, you wanna make sure that's going through a full normal run cycle, so that way you're testing it in its normal element. Now, um, what you can do, there's two ways that you can take that information once you've actually tested, right? Because it's one thing to test, but it's another thing to actually use that information to do something with. That's why we test in the first place. So this particular kit comes with an actual uh, wireless printer. So if, like I said before, if you have a customer that's on site, um, facility manager, whatever it is, and they want something to print off for their records, you can do that right on the spot. That's really nice to have. Because sometimes people just want something 
that's tangible that you can hand to them showing what their, um, how their machine is operating, what the efficiency rating is, and that sort of thing. And then secondly, this can uh, link up to their job link app uh, through Bluetooth. So let's say you, you don't have this with you or you don't have this at all, you can hook up to the app, you can email it to your customer, email it to your boss, whoever it is, but you can send that information over to where they have it at their fingertips. That is really nice to have, right? Because a tool is one thing to test, right? To figure out what's going on, what things are, how things are doing, but it's another to be able to take that information and just quickly send it off to wherever it needs to go. So that's pretty handy. You've got the uh, wireless printer or the Bluetooth app all at your fingertips. So earlier I was saying this analyzer is multiple tools built into one. And the reason why is because of these ports down here. We have port one and port two. We can use this in multiple ways. So while we're actually doing a combustion analysis, we can hook up these two ports to let's say the inlet and the outlet of the gas valve and we can check our pressure. So that way if we need to make any adjustments, we can see it in real time, not only through the actual gas pressure itself, but through our parameters. We'll start seeing things change, which is really nice to have. And then secondly, you can utilize these ports to check um, airflow static pressure. So we could put one on the return side, one on the supply side, and you can start checking your static pressure, which in turn can give you airflow. Um, again, this is just a very nice tool to have. Having all that functionality all built into one rugged tool I just think it's fantastic. So this analyzer is charged through its USB-C port and it should last you around seven hours of runtime. So that's really nice. That can get you testing on a lot of equipment, but if you do need to charge it, you can actually charge while it's testing. So that's really nice. Let's say you have a receptacle close by or a portable power bank, whatever you got, you can charge it while you're using it. So that's really nice. Also, the screen on this thing is fantastic. It's a five and a half inch screen. It's color and it's touch screen, so it's very intuitive to use. Not only that, it's a very high contrast screen. So let's say you're on a rooftop working on a boiler, it's nice and sunny out, you're still gonna be able to read that screen nicely. Um, other than that, you know, like I said before, it's super rugged, which is really nice, and it has that thousand feet of connectivity for the job link app, just like all their other products these days. So that's really nice to have. There's been multiple times where I've been connected to the job link app and I've been sitting in the truck eating my lunch while my tools are doing their job measuring for me and I can monitor them from inside the truck. So that's pretty nice to have. But other than that, that's pretty much it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, see you guys later.